Okay, good morning. Thanks for joining us um, in this presentation about the new Magnolia website, which we released one week ago, exactly today. Uh, from business requirements to the, the development of MagnoliaCMS.com, personalized, integrated, responsive, and a joy to edit. It's a long title, I know, but we're very proud about it, and uh, yeah, we're going to tell you a bit more today. So, a couple of introductions. Uh, my name is Ben Price. I'm the marketing manager here at Magnolia since nearly five years. And uh, yeah, I work in the marketing team, and we are responsible for the, uh, the, the corporate website, our main web property, magnoliacms.com. And uh, I am the project, uh, project manager um, for this, and my colleague. Okay, I'm Tomasz Grigowski, interactive developer in the Magnolia. Uh, please don't ask me what does it mean, but technically I'm working for the, in the marketing team and doing front-end stuff with the Magnolia. So, we, about a year ago we knew we wanted to rebuild our website, and um, at the end of last year it was agreed that we would do it this year. Um, so what are the goals? Um, for the website, and perhaps first of all, why am I stood here as well? I know this is the technical track, uh, some of you may be wondering, but I think it's interesting how we um, collaborated on this project. I think it's interesting to put these technical solutions into a perhaps more uh, global perspective, more of a business use case perspective. So I think together we can present this quite nicely. So th the primary goals for the website were first of all to make it easier to engage with Magnolia. This morning, uh, sorry, yesterday Pascal mentioned this, making it easier to engage, and that's actually one of our key values, easy to engage with Magnolia. And we wanted to apply this to the website, and I will present more about that, but this is uh, one of the primary goals of the site. We wanted to provide a relevant and personalized visitor experience. Um, with the previous implementation, we could not make, we, we did not have content personalization, and we were so we had certain restrictions on making content relevant, so this was a new goal for this implementation. And making the site um, a joy to edit. This is also something you may have heard a few times over the past uh, couple of days, a joy to use. Magnolia should be a joy to use. So we wanted to implement this in a way that editors would actually have fun working with it, and it would not be frustrating, but it would be yeah, the perfect implementation. And of course, we also wanted to drink our own champagne. Um, it was key, of course, naturally it goes without saying that we would do this with Magnolia. Um, but we see ourselves also as the, perhaps the first customer of Magnolia. You know, we work directly um, with various, team, various teams within Magnolia. So we try and be the first to install the latest release, we try and be the first to provide timely feedback, and we try and implement features so that um, we know what we're talking about. Yeah, at some points we really want to, to push limits of the Magnolia to almost to edges and try what we are possible to do. And I hope we will show it later to you what we have done. So what were the more detailed requirements of the site? Firstly, we wanted complete flexibility for our editor team. So I lead the editor team. We are we were five editors on this, um, on this site at, at various times. Um, our marketing function has other um, responsibilities as well. Um, but of course, everyone on the marketing team does uh, work with the website. And we wanted to be able to create content without restriction. We wanted to be able to create any kind of page um, or content type that the business would throw at us. Um, I would never want to be in that situation where I could say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I know what you're saying, but we cannot deliver that. I wanted flexibility, and this was about yeah, creating content quickly and easily and yeah, without restrictions. Okay, and how we achieve this step? Uh, the really foundation for the new website is using Bootstrap HTML framework, which is coming with Twitter Bootstrap module 1.3. Uh, other than just the responsiveness of, of the site it's, and resources, uh, we also use the basic components, which, which are there. And just for the demonstration and compared to previous website, on the previous website, for whatever change you want to have in, in component, we just duplicate that component and extend it and add some extra features you ask. And at the end, 
like two weeks ago on the old corporate website. In the total, we have more than 32 page definitions and more than six, uh, 85 component definitions only from corporate website module. I'm not counting SDK, form, RSS, and other, uh, other components or definitions we use as well. And to, to give uh, editors uh, flexibility, which Ben is talking about, uh, also means to reduce this, these numbers to minimum. Uh, with the Twitter bootstrap, we are using two page definitions and five components definitions. And extra to this, we add two more page definitions, five more components definitions, and nines for content apps. And I can say that's almost total number what we, are, what we have now for the corporate website and are possible to do almost whatever we want. Uh, let me show you one demonstration. Uh, talking about flexibility, it mainly means flexibility with the layout of the page and um, position of the components and this stuff. Just quickly how editors can work with the, uh, with the layout. Just create page. You can see I'm using just four page templates. It's across all sides, just on the root there is one more home page. There is immediately group. Just as a placeholder, I'm going to use an image to, to demonstrate just this, this. By default, there is a placeholder, so image uh, editors are able to see what's there. Uh, talking about layout, there is a component called row, and now I have one, one column and one uh, component image in that column. On the row perspective, you can go to edit the row and choose your layout from these options. These are predefined, but easily to, easily to change. So if editors now want to want the two columns layout, just change this and it's there. Now I have just the empty one. Of course, you can do more. You can have layout which looks like uh, one, two, three. When the one is size of the one column and the second one is size of the three columns. Um, let me just add just quickly some demonstration. More image here. Image with the line box, just like this. Yeah, well. And let's say I want to have fly out one, one, two. By the way, these columns are draggable. So you can yeah, just click, change layout this way. Uh, just add one more here. Yeah. By the way, you can, uh, for the whole row, you can duplicate. Let's wait. So I have two rows. Again, for the second one, I can just go to, to edit the layout, change to different one, two plus one, one. Maybe it looks nice. And by the way, it's responsive, if I will show you. So editors don't have to care about, about responsiveness. It's, it's Twitter Bootstrap is taking care of this. Later, I will show you how to easily add another layout. These are predefined, but it's Easily just option, option the dialog, and this everything is scouting flexible. So this is not a really big deal. That's for the for the presentation of the layout. Yeah. By the way, connect together with this how the row and the columns are flexible. Uh, we try to reuse the same flexibility on every single component, and the best example is is a teaser component. With one teaser component, and I will show you now in a few seconds, uh, we are able to point to seven different locations, like internal page, external page, assets, and uh, for another content apps. You can create, you can combine teaser, teaser style, let's say this one, or this one with the colors, which gives you at the end option to create 30 different looking uh, teasers. And you can use dumb images or any of more than 600 icons from Font Afsam or our Magnolia icon graphic. This is from Font Afsam. This icon is, is uh, from Magnolia icon library. Just quickly, if. Okay, 
these are them. So first, you have option. Do you want internal page? Just open the pages, choose a page. External, that's just the link. Asset, you are in the asset app. You want a event, you are in the event app. Let's now, for the demonstration, I want to create a teaser for uh, Open Expo Day. I want to look the teaser like we called it bubble. I want to, uh, this I will keep predefined, maybe label. Uh, and I want to use the icon from the font Afsum. I'm sure everybody of you know font Afsum. Let's say I want to use this calendar icon. Just copy this name, go paste here. And I want to have a color for the plum. That's our favorite one now. And yeah, I don't have icon. Nice. Yeah. So this way you can really create two, two different or much more different teasers. That's how, how we have all components flexible. These four are, are examples. Then so that's, uh, thanks. We love welcome. it. Yeah, we really do. That really gives us the flexibility we needed to adapt to any kind of um, page type that we wanted, mid-project, late project. We could move things around in a very easy to use grid format. But, but one more detail, another advantage of, of this flexible components is if uh, on the previous side, if editors decide to change style of the teaser, we have to have another component. That means delete one, add new one, uh, fill that every data again. Now you just change style and it works. It's continue. So this gave us the flexibility we needed. Um, another important requirement to help us fulfill the engagement requirement, how do we help visitors engage with the site um, since about a year and a half now, we're working with a marketing automation tool. For those of you that are not familiar with such a system, it's basically a combination of a basic CRM functionality. You have all your contacts and information about them. And you have uh, automatic, you, know, you have a, a web-based email functionality. Combining the two and allowing that system to put forms on your website allows you to capture the information, um, add additional information, categorize those, uh, those various audience segments, tag them so that you can apply different campaigns, and then use the email tool to, uh, to send out timely information, all automated. Um, this is a very powerful tool for, for marketing teams and business teams, and something we wanted to make more use of. Um, in the previous site, the way we were working was uh, setting up an automation campaign. Uh, this was done in the automation system. We were using one called Infusionsoft, um, but there are much more well-known ones such as HubSpot, Eloqua. So we would set the campaign up. We would create a page on the site for this campaign, uh, basically where we wanted to put the form in. That could be a form to download um, or to register, for example, for an Enterprise Edition trial. Um, in the previous case, we would have to take the form snippet um, and paste that as an HTML component within the site. Um, basically, forms were hosted um, on the uh, automation system, and we were basically trying to apply a, a website style to this and embed it on the page. Um, there was a lot of copy and paste, so as you can see, hopefully you pasted the right one. There was room for error. And finally, well, before you publish it, but hopefully the styling was okay because um, sometimes we would have different form requirements within the Infusionsoft system, for example, radio buttons or a list. And when it came to publishing, we would realize that the, the styling needed an update. So every HTML component needed a slightly different style, and this was taking way too much time and was not good enough. Uh, yeah, most important thing is that that forms are technically stored on the CMR, like Infusionsoft, so they are not really existing in the, in the Magnolia, and anyhow, we have to get them to Magnolia. Luckily, with the Magnolia, we have Infusionsoft integration coming with the external forms module 1.1, and now I will demonstrate to how to get uh, that form into page, and thank you, Ben, for a nice long presentation of this CMR, and I will try to do it a little bit more quickly. Just remove this old thing. Uh, 
Okay. We have another component called Infusionsoft Form. And in this component, I have to choose. These are already forms loaded from the Infusionsoft site externally. And if I want to get to page this on-demand form, I have to do just this. And the form is there. That's all. And well, soon we are also going on the, uh, working on uh, integration to get the, the traits from, or to use personalization traits based on the data on the Infusionsoft. So later we can even personalize content on, on this. So this was working fantastic. We were able to engage our audience uh, more easily. Um, another key requirement was search. So we had certain challenges with this on a um, previous site. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the out-of-the-box Magnolia uh, search module. But we wanted to be able to search, I think, uh, for example, content within content apps. We wanted, as editors, to, we wanted to be able to boost certain pages or certain content um, easily. So this was um, one of the key challenges that we put to Tomash, and also to be able to yeah, use these filtered lists and um, yeah, have a much more flexible search throughout the site. OK. Um, again, we use existing module uh, for Magnolia, uh, Solar Search Provider and Content Indexer module 2.2.1, which offer a much more faster and flexible source search with the crawling, with easy just a configuration. For me as a front-ender, it's just a configuration in, in a JCR to get everything running, set up boosting, set up everything. And uh, there is not so much to, to show just that we really like the result. If I'm on our live site, go for, yeah, I already have it there. For the IoT, I get a lot of results. Uh, order by, uh, keyword in the URI, in the title, in, in keywords, in metadata, and the rest, it's counting the number, how much this keyword is, is used in the text or everywhere, and you get this result. Uh, I really start to, to like this tool, this solar implementation and a little bit work around and play what we can do with that. And uh, later we decide uh, to use it for our 4 or 4 page. Currently we don't have 4 or 4 page on, on the site, but what happens if you, uh, if you have any non-existing page? Uh, yeah, by the way, I have a I have good example. Uh, okay, not here. Uh, whatever. A uh, part like this is not exist now on the site. Maybe it exists on the old site. It exists somewhere externally. It's still trying to reach this content, but it, it is not exist this page. So what happens if you have this link from the external source? You just directly get the result for IBM. That's, I think, much better than for a full page. So this gives us a much more powerful search. Um, so yeah, box ticked. The next um, requirement we had was to work much more with content apps. Um, I'm sure you're all well familiar um, with Magnolia 5, the, the power and ability you can get with content apps. And this was something we really wanted to leverage and make the most of. Um, yeah, basically because we, were, we had lots of different types of content that we wanted to reuse across the site. We, in the previous site, we had basically static pages for everything. Every single resource, white paper that we ever did, every video, um, it all had a separate page. Um, for our partner directory, every partner had a static page within the hierarchy. And this was very cumbersome to work with um, as an editor. So we wanted a much quicker and easier way to work with this content and to be able to reuse that, to be able to categorize it, and to be able to personalize it as well. OK. Uh, this was probably the biggest task on the, on the new website, work and set up everything to, to work with the content apps. Uh, currently, we have nine new content apps. Uh, I will show you just, just in a minute. Many of them is connected together, like our partners and references. We are using REST calls and AngularJS to, uh, to display the list. Uh, we also use the flexibility of the components. So for each of them, we have just one component, which allow you to get um, any, any kind of list editors just want. And 
and we also offer the personalization of the content by country. Uh, let me now do another demo. Okay, here this line, these are our content apps we are using right now. Just quickly show you how that content apps, if you are still not familiar with the content apps, how it looks like. It's just a database of, of items, of entries. This one we are using for our partners. You have just uh, structurized content to, to fields. You can have some links. And more important, we are connecting it with the uh, out-of-the-box categories, uh, categorized module, and set the categories for each of them, uh, no matter how much you want. And now just let let demonstrate how you can get this the list to the page. I'm again going to throw this away. Okay. Uh, we have component for one of them, so I'm going to choose the list for partners. Hmm, just like this. And now I have a list of all partners on the page. These are all from the category categories up, uh, content up. What we can do with this component, uh, sorry, not this one. with this component, is to allow uh, visitors to use filters. Let's say allow them to use country as a filter or search filter. And that's when AngularJS is really coming to work because now if you're going to, to search for you see immediately when I type a symbol it's it's reduced that list. Without page reloading, it's even work with the with the admin central, so I don't have to switch to, to public or the preview. And it, it works really fast and, and nicely. Uh, by the way, this, this one component you can reuse to display only uh, partners from industry, for example, media. And I want to display only four of them, and I want to display the newest partner first. So I have just four of them from this media uh, by this. You can also personalize, just check this box. And it's, now it's still not personalized, but when I'm going to preview as a visitor, add a trade for the country, and choose what? Germany, I have different content. And this, this component, component like this, we have for every single other, other content app. So you can now really recreate, connect them. And yeah, by the way, if you have one, one result, uh, let me just remove this display only. Uh, let's go just to, to upper the detail page. By the way, this is technically just a one page, uh, which works with the selectors and which remapping to, to load. Uh, content from the content app. So this page is not existing in the tree. But thank you to Sol and the Crawler, they are also in the search results. And if you are on the upper toe, here down we have references. This is similar component loaded from the another content app, from, from references app, and references which are connected to upper toe are di immediately displayed on this page. So technically we are working with the template and just changing the uh, changing um, content in this template. Mm. Yeah, by the way, uh, we, have, we have nine content apps, usually doing same stuff, but we have one, which <laughs> might teaser up, which rule them all. It's, it's uh, technically no big deal, but it's just content app which provide, which have uh, items which are teasers to any existing internal page. That means you can, any, any single uh, internal page, you can categorize uh, whatever you want, and then you can create a list of teasers to this page. You can use it for the news, press release, uh, customer list, well, not customer list, case study list, or whatever else you want, just, just with this one, this one content up. And, of course, using the categories uh, out of the box. 
module or, or app. So this gave us, yeah, a huge power um, with the content apps. And the final requirement was to deliver all of this um, before today. <laughs> uh, and we did that. Like I mentioned, we went live one week ago, successfully, I would say. And um, yeah. But at the time when we first heard about this, um, it was beginning of the year, and we said, there's no way this is going to be possible. Um, but we had the gauntlet thrown down. This was our challenge. Our deadline had been set for the conference. Um, so yeah. That was your problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I also, first days, I also have to figure out how to really deliver in the time, because technically just, just I was assigned to this project and with some uh, promised external resources with the Java developers and so on. But I know it will be really hard to, last time we did all side and three persons for the same time. So it's going to be really hard. So some approaches which we decide, I call it Java Lightway. Uh, I would like to say other than that, uh, that content apps and the rest calls and this thing, I'm not using any custom Java at all in this, in this project. Everything else is just in the free marker. So it's free marker, heavyweight. Heavy using of the CMS function, SDK function, DOM function, all these things. And also have to do some, uh, or also we have some changes in, in UI and in the configuration. Um, let me just quickly show you. Uh, Again, I can just well, just for demonstration, I am sure because of the empty group placeholders you see the dividing. And now if I as a as a developer <laughs> nice uh, wants to add another option, you know that this dialog uh, this dialog is now just predefined by these, these options, and I'm going to add extra one. So reduce number of clicks and the work with the, with the configuration to minimum. So I can just from here, from the page, and only me as a super user can go directly to template definition. Uh, okay. it's, it's this one. Plus, I have some links here. I can immediately open template script. Or... Um, go to dialog definition, which is now interesting for me. Oh, just this class not working. And now I'm in the dialog, just going to, to layout. And let's say I want to add a new layout. Mm, duplicate. Which is going to be what? Three plus two plus one. Like this, go to page and this mice, mice there, and it's flexible. And three plus two plus plus one, even plus responsiveness and everything. So, just just simply, or maybe one more example. Uh, Page. Let's say I want to disable some area on the page, so I want to extend this one. Uh, uh, I want to my let's say my page extend C O. Oh. A little bit nervous. I'm sorry. So yeah, I have extend. Now I want to disable any area. I can just click and go to that page. Just have to scroll and let's say uh, I'm in the dialogs. So for illustration, I would like to disable this field or override. So what I have to do, you probably know, take this path, go back to my. And 
minutes, you see all this was created by one dialog, technically one click. So you are saving your time during the configuration and this stuff. And yeah, that's also help us to, to deliver this project in, in time. So just to summarize very quickly, I apologize, we're overrunning a little bit. We um, basically delivered this project within four months. Um, we scoped and planned the project within Janu uh, in June, January, started in February and delivered one week ago. So basically, yeah, we were very happy with the result, especially considering that you could implement most of the project yourself. And that's what it was like developing the site with Magnolia, and that's kind of how we were feeling um, about a week ago, and I think we deserved it as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And at that point, uh, obviously, we didn't deliver this on our own. We had a lot of help, a lot of great colleagues that we worked with. And although we're running a little bit late, I apologize, but I would just really quickly like to um, invite to the front of the stage anyone in this room that was involved within the implementation just to kind of uh, take the congratulations as well. We didn't really have time to celebrate this launch. So anyone who's in the room, Jan, Isa, Laura, Milan, Zach, Andreas, if you're, if you're around, literally, if you could come yeah, to the stage. Yeah, please come to join us on the stage. We have some more surprise for all of you. Very quickly. <laughs> yeah, by the way, usually this is, until they get to the podium, this is a time for the questions. I'm sorry, we don't have a time to questions. We knew it. Uh, but I would really love to answer all your questions, so please uh, catch us on, on the lounge or, or later during the day and whatever is interesting for you. Uh, let's talk about that. And... Yeah, now, now, yeah. <laughs> now we have to, it's already open. Okay, we have one more thing to do, drink our oven champagne. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>